We've found thousands of planets scattered through our own galaxy, so it should be of no surprise to expect planets in other galaxies. But finding planets is actually pretty tricky, even the closest stars to us are hard to find planets around. So finding planets around stars in other galaxies is even harder still when you think about the distances between galaxies. Which is why it's so exciting this new announcement of a discovery of a planet in the galaxy M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now aside from looking absolutely gorgeous, the Whirlpool Galaxy has lots of things called X-ray sources. And there was one bright X-ray source that was being studied by the Chandra Space Telescope. And this space telescope was just staring at the source to see what would happen. Now the source itself is a pretty interesting object. You have something like a neutron star or a black hole at the center with another star being torn to pieces and fed on to the neutron star or black hole. Now this X-ray source is extremely bright and easy to see with X-ray telescopes. So it was very interesting that an X-ray source just suddenly disappeared while they were looking at it. Now we can see the data that they collected in this plot here, where on the y-axis we have the brightness of the X-ray source, and that's measured in this thing called counts. And on the x-axis we have time, which in this case is measured in kiloseconds or thousands of seconds. And that's just a strange formality that X-ray astronomers have. You can think of a kilosecond as about 20 minutes. And here we have the entirety of their light curve, the data they collected over time of this X-ray source. And you can see it does some pretty interesting things. It bounces around a lot, which can tell you about how the X-ray source is feeding off its neighbor. But all of a sudden, at around 150 kiloseconds, it just disappears. The light coming from this X-ray source is no more. And then after a little bit, it comes back again. And that looks quite peculiar. Why would this X-ray source suddenly turn off and then turn back on? Well, the X-ray source itself probably didn't change. It's more likely that something passed in front of it. You see, this area here of the light curve where the dip happens looks incredibly similar to what we see when a planet passes in front of a star. In this case, we have an exoplanet passing in front of its host star, its parent star, and it creates what's called an exoplanet transit. It blocks a little bit of the light coming from the star and casts a small shadow on us, so we see this characteristic dip in brightness. So it seems pretty interesting that we see as well a characteristic dip in brightness around this X-ray source. And the difference here being that all of the energy from the X-ray source is being blocked out, not just a portion of it. And this makes sense because either the neutron star or a black hole, depending on which it is, would also be quite small. So if you had a big planet, it is entirely possible that could block out all of the light coming from the source. On the same note, if you had a small star or a brown dwarf passing in front of it, it would do the same thing. So it seems, based off this one dip, we could say that there is a planet-like object orbiting this X-ray source. But it's not quite as clear-cut as that. The research group which did this study then went on to claim that it's good proof that we have found the first planet outside of our galaxy. And although this does look like a convincing dip, it's definitely not conclusive proof. It could be any number of things, although they try their best to rule out other scenarios like small stars or brown dwarfs, it's still entirely possible that it is one of these things going around this X-ray source instead of a planet. And just basing this off of one dip is also a little bit suspect. It's good enough to say you have a planetary candidate, but it's certainly not good enough to say that you have discovered a planet in its fullest especially for this bold claim of saying we've discovered a planet in another galaxy. So what could you do to, say, confirm that you've discovered a planet in a nearby galaxy? Well, you just do the same thing again. You watch this X-ray source and see if another dip happens in the future. And if it does, then you can see what the time difference between those dips is, and then look for a third occurring at the same difference again. 
And if you find a similar time difference between all of these things, then you have a really good case for a regularly orbiting object. And once you have established the orbit of this object, you can also start to work out some more of its properties, like its orbital parameters, how far away it is from the X-ray source, how big it would need to be to block the light coming from it. And from that, you could work out what type of planet it is. So at the moment, it's not conclusive that we've found the first planet in another galaxy, but it is a good first step and definitely worth further investigation. This discovery joins the other exciting announcement from two years ago, which suggested that there are potentially billions of planets orbiting the center of a distant quasar around the supermassive black hole. The gravity of these billions of planets changing and warping space, giving telltale signatures. But this case of billions of exoplanets alongside this case of a single exoplanet around an X-ray source is yet to be confirmed. Both would be incredibly exciting to have proven to be correct. And it would be absolutely enormous for the astronomy community to have a planet discovered outside of our galaxy. It would be fascinating to see what kind of planet this is. And even more awesome to see our rules of how planets orbit, not just within our own galaxy, but within other galaxies. So at the moment, don't believe that we've found a planet inside M51. Instead, keep an eye on this discovery and hopefully we will have a confirmation in the future of the first planet orbiting an X-ray source outside of our galaxy in the World War Galaxy. If you enjoyed this video please do leave a like they help and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe to see more videos about the awesome discoveries that are coming in the future and if you want to talk about some science leave your questions and comments in the comments section below i'll be happy to talk about anything space related with all of you